I started out in 1974 with Bobby Smith and the boys from Shiloh and Uncle Josh Graves. I was fortunate enough to play with one of my musical heroes, Lester Flatt, when I was 21 years old and I was his last banjo picker. That entailed being on the Grand Ole Opry and touring on the big Martha White bus and, and that was a real treat. Next stop for me was banjo player for Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Boys from 1981 to 1991. And that encompassed 48 states, seven countries, a Grammy album, appearances at Carnegie Hall, the Kennedy Center, the Grand Ole Opry on all the weekends that we were off. So it was a really demanding, but a, a neat job to be working with a man that's a a Bluegrass Hall of Famer, a Country Music Hall of Famer, a Songwriters Hall of Famer, and little known fact, Bill Monroe is a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because Carl Perkins and Elvis got their rockabilly rhythms from some of his earlier instrumentals. So that was a real neat thing to work with Bill Monroe all those years. We had our own band called Williams and Clark Expedition, and I traveled with my wife on the road for several years. We made several CDs, and uh, we played a lot, and we worked all over the country, made a trip to Japan, made an appearance at the Ryman Auditorium, so that was a real blessing, entertaining people and having fun. Bluegrass music is a highly entertaining, highly energetic type music. It's got the five-string banjos, bass fiddles, guitars. It's mostly acoustic instruments. But it sings about all the things that people have going on in their life. That there's always gospel music included. There's happy songs, sad songs, lost love, fiery instrumentals. It's one of the best live musics in the world. It's uh, recognized by the fact that Bill Monroe created this music in 1945 when Earl Scruggs and Lester Flatt, Chubby Wise, and Cedric Rainwater hit the stage at the Ryman Auditorium. And Earl's three-finger banjo roll just set the world on fire, and you will hear that sound in today's music a lot. The bands today are changing it a little. They're adding to it. They're writing their original songs and stuff, but it's a captivating music. And if you've never been to a festival, you should come because not only is it a safe environment, but it's a friendly environment, and everybody becomes friends. It's like going to a family reunion where everybody gets along. When I was 17 years old and attended my first bluegrass festival at a, as a performer, it was in Jackson, Kentucky, and I was just so excited. And I was walking through the woods one night, and Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Boys were on stage. And they had just this little, small, sure PA system. Kenny Baker, who was Bill Monroe's longtime fiddle player, kicked off Footprints in the Snow, and the hair literally stood up on the back of my neck. That was a wonderful moment, but since then I have had so many great moments in my life from being on stage with Earl Scruggs to meeting the President George Bush to having events at the Grand Ole Opry and on CMT that have just all been special memories for me. Bill Monroe was always happy to see, for example, the Kentucky Headhunters recorded one of Bill Monroe's songs, or two of them. Ricky Skaggs recorded Uncle Penn and Wheel Hoss and put electric instruments behind him. He had no problem with that. He loved, he loved the fact that bluegrass was getting the attention. Bill himself would keep his music the way it had always been with real particular attention to the, the melody of the song. He liked for his uh, uh, pickers to play the melody, and, and he was a prolific songwriter and creator, but, but he would be proud that music, the music is still thriving and growing. Document your life, because when you write things down in a diary and take pictures and photographs, it will really come in handy someday to have it documented precisely and accurately, and you'd be surprised at how much you've got to offer when you look back on it.